Good morning. Welcome to Waypoint. You may be seated. And just some uh, quick announcements as we start this beautifully, uh, beautiful day. And so thankful for last weekend and all who, who came together to help with the services at Good Friday and Easter. And what a great, great celebration of our risen Lord. And so as we go forward, just some announcements that you need to be aware of. Very first one at the top of our list. Next week, especially for you guys, next week is going to be very, very different than, uh, than this week. We are not having regular services here because we are participating with other organizations and churches and businesses in the community on Clarkston Impact Weekend, April 29th and 30th. That's Saturday and Sunday. Tons of details in your bulletin. Go to the website and uh, they need people to sign up. That's the, as I sat in on a meeting this week, they said, make sure people sign up because kudos to Neiman's Market. They're providing lunch for everybody who signs up online but they need to know where to send these lunches. And so uh, lots of opportunities. Check out uh, many of our local partners who have uh, opportunities. Uh, Disaster Relief at Work is gonna do some packing at their warehouse. Uh, Oakland Hope has a lot going on both on Saturday and Sunday. Uh, elementary schools and ways that we can partner with the schools in the community. And then I wanted to share one with you is this Touch of Grace workshop that happens here on Saturday, nine to noon. And it's an opportunity for, for people who want to to be equipped to work with loved ones with dementia or Alzheimer's. And this is a, a workshop that's put on. You'll, you'll have resources from it. Uh, you, there is a presentation uh, that'll take place. Uh, Carolyn Place has helped us line this up, and we just need you to register. The cost is $30, and, and based on just resources alone, it's completely worth it, but, uh, but much more so for the content of what you'll have there. And so, uh, again, just wanted to highlight that. Details in your bulletin. National Day of Prayer takes place on May 4th, I think, and uh, it's uh, in your bulletin, but make sure you sign up for that and see Kathy Hefner or the Welcome Center for details on that as we gather together as brothers and sisters in the community of Clarkston to lift up our country and our community in prayer. If you participated in the Malachi Challenge, this, uh, this wonderful, wonderful uh, experience, it, it ends today, so uh, if, if you have questions on that, see me or see uh, Mark Lewis, our, our finance chair on this, but it finishes up today. And then uh, something else cool that's coming up is Kids Musical. And once a year, our kids put together this amazing musical, and this happens in early May. Details in your bulletin. It does not take place here, but takes place in the community at Starlight Theater. If you need tickets for this, if you want to go to this, you need tickets for this. If you need tickets for this, you should get them today. If you know of people who need tickets for this, you should get them today. It is by far the best day to get them. And uh, it's not general seating. It's, it's assigned seats. So if you need any one of those performances, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, or whenever they are. Details in your bulletin. Uh, and then uh, one last one, lawn care uh, volunteers. We need uh, people to step up and help us mow the lawn uh, this summer. And uh, the past couple years, this has gone so great. And the ways that we can take care of this facility together and be good stewards of our resources. So it's a zero turn lawnmower. It's a, it's a fun thing to ride and cut lawn with. But if you're interested in that, uh, contact the church office. We'll get you scheduled sometime this summer.
nothing worth more that will ever come close. Nothing compares your our living home. Your presence. I tasted and seen of the sweetest of in you and God we exalt you as Lord of all God you are King of Kings you are Lord of Lords and God you reign in our lives thank you God for your presence here God thank you so much as we just sang about your Holy Spirit and, and God we proclaim with gladness in our hearts that, that you are welcome here and it is our, our plea, our, our prayer, our petition before you that you would anoint us and even fill us with your Holy Spirit, Lord, in order that we might be equipped for the journey and for the opportunities to be your witnesses locally, regionally, and globally. Thank you, God, for this time here. And we ask your, your blessing upon our lives and upon this service. And Lord, it's in Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. And I'm going to ask those who are passing the offering plates, who are serving us in this way, uh, to come forward and, and do this at, the, at this time. And then uh, while they're doing that, I wanted to talk to you uh, about our elections here at Waypoint. And this is, this is a topic that mainly involves members. But I wanted to very intentionally do it here uh, with, with everybody as an invitation to be a part of the, of the process and to join into membership uh, so you can contribute in, in meaningful ways by voting, by, by being nominated and, and giving nominations. <laughs> Um, 
again, we are going to have a, a membership class here uh, in the next uh, short little bit. Kind of today is one of the last days to, to be a part of that, or let me know that you want to be a part of that. So uh, email me, just pull me aside, let me know that you want to be a part of that, and we'll figure out a time uh, as we gather together people for this membership class. But we are going to be doing an election, uh, a vote for some of our lay leaders, our leadership here at church, and that'll take place on May 7th, and a communication went out way early in the process uh, for this, but uh, May 7th is coming up. So I want to let you know what that looks like. And as part of our uh, leadership, we have two categories of leaders that I'll mention to you here, and that is delegate and leadership team. And I just want you guys to be familiar with these terms. And uh, delegate is going to be a, a voted on position, and this is the highest level of lay leadership here at Waypoint and in a free Methodist church. A delegate has very specific, very important responsibilities. They're kind of the inner circle, the pastor's cabinet, if you will, to me. Our delegates serve as our personnel team here at Waypoint, and our delegates also, as one of their key roles, they represent Waypoint at annual conference. And our annual conference is coming up, and we're a part of the East Michigan Conference, and that's about 50 churches uh, that are represented there. But for the decision-making, for the mission and vision of our conference, for the ways that the conference equips and helps out the church, our delegates have a voice in that. So this is, this is a very important role, and here at Waypoint we have five delegates. So two of those delegate seats have expired terms. I'm also going to mention to you about leadership team, and our leadership team is, is a body of, of leaders voted upon by you guys and, and represents us as we pursue our mission and vision. And so that leadership team gathers once a month, usually on a Tuesday night, and these meetings are open to anybody. You can stop in, you know, grab some popcorn, you know, and just enjoy the time together or, or, or whatnot. But this is a, an opportunity where leaders come together and pursue the mission and vision of Waypoint Free Methodist Church as we seek to live out God's will in our lives. So uh, lots of decisions are, are made there, discussions are made for the purpose of, of pursuing that. So we've got two leadership team seats with vacated terms, with uh, expired terms. So that's a total of four vacant seats. And I want to let you know that uh, through our process that we've uh, done, uh, we've got four nominees for those four seats. So I want to let you know that on May 7th, voting will be done in the foyer. It'll be from 9 a.m. to 11.15 and you must be present to vote. So if you are a member here at Waypoint, this is something that you get to participate in as part of your membership, where you check in and then you vote uh, on that morning. And we'll announce the results at the society meeting right after second service. So there's four nominees up for four spots. I wanted to let you know, just for, for help in future years, our process and what we've done to get to this spot. So as part of our process, all leadership team and delegate uh, members with expiring terms, they were excluded from input in any part of this process. In January and February, we sent a letter to uh, an email to our members for the purpose of uh, accepting nominations from our membership. Also, our leadership team serves as a nominating uh, committee, and they presented nominees as well. So in February and March, a key part of this process pursues the Book of Discipline, and uh, paragraph 6200 spells out what a leader at Waypoint, someone uh, delegate or leadership team level, looks like and, and incorporate scripture from uh, 1st and 2nd Timothy and Titus and other places on what a leader is to look like. And there's a couple of th things that our book of discipline spells out specifically for leaders in this context. And they, they need to be involved in their local church and regular in attendance. And they also need to give at least to a level of a tithe. And so there was a screening that was done by our gals in the office on attendance, and we erred on the side of grace on this, and just making sure that someone who is nominated is a part of our fellowship. And then also our finance team uh, went through a screening of those nominees, uh, and again, erring on the side of, of grace and, and whatnot, but is this person participating by giving it a at least to a level of a tithe and pursuing this paragraph 6200 in our bylaws. So out of that, we had several several nominees and then discussions took place between our nominating uh, 
committee and these nominees. Here's what's involved. Here's what you'd be expected to do. Do you have any questions about this? Please read you know, this part of the Book of Discipline as far as your role and responsibilities uh, of this leadership team or delegate nomination. As part of those conversations, we had several people step out of the process and say, I I'm honored to be nominated, but for what's going on in my life right now, not, not right now. I'm interested in the future, but, but for right now, no. So out of this whole process, we have four people left from the process up for those four seats. And so I'm going to show you the ballot here uh, on the screen. So what will take place is you as members will vote for two seats, and there are three people up for that delegate role. And those three people are Kurt Haney, Jim Matrowski, and Glenn Moore. And uh, uh, those that are here, you guys, do you guys mind coming up here up on stage just so people can see your face? Come on up, Kurt and Jim. And while they're coming up, Glenn Moore was not able to be here, but you'll see his picture up on the screen. And there's, there's Glenn enjoying some vacation. Oh, dear. Uh, but but uh, just so you have a, a name to a face, this is Kurt Haney, this is Jim Matrowski. Would you give it up for these guys? And and uh, being willing, you guys can grab a seat. Yeah, thanks. And, and for being, you know, this is, this is something special for people being willing to put themselves out there to be voted upon, to, to pursue this, uh, this challenge of, of this level of leadership and the res roles and responsibilities that come with that. What we'll do for the leadership team part of the ballot is there will be two of those three individuals who will be elected to delegate. The one who is not will then be down on the leadership team ballot along with Melanie Traver. And Melanie, are you here? Is Melanie uh, around to step up? Yeah. Hey, this is Melanie Traver. And uh, yeah. <laughs> And, and you will be asked to affirm those two for, for leadership team, just a, a yes or no on that ballot. So that'll be the main part of the ballot. And if you have questions on that, let me know, check with our church office, but uh, that'll be the main part of our ballot. One other thing that I need to mention to you is something that the leadership team has brought to you as a motion, and because it comes from a, a nominated body, an elected body, it comes with the power of a second, per Robert's Rules of Order. And it is this, this motion motion, the standing rule that is brought before you with power of a second. You, you are asked to affirm this or, or deny this. You check yes or no on this, but this, help, this could conceivably help Waypoint Church out as we send delegates to our annual conference to represent us. There are times when one of our five delegates is not able to be there at annual conference and to vote, but if we send a reserve delegate, they can take the place and then we still have our, our, our full number of votes at our annual body. So so this is, a, this is a standing motion, just that the current leadership, leadership team member with the longest uninterrupted tenure has ability to serve as a reserve delegate as needed. So you'll be able to vote yes or no on this. So this is the ballot, this is the, the process, and just one last plea is to be involved. I know this stuff isn't super exciting. I mean, you, you don't, you don't, you know, you don't pursue getting to listen to this or be part of this necessarily, but we, we ask you to be involved, and we're all better when we participate together. We've got such a wonderful, amazing variety of people and, and skill sets, and so if you're not a member, uh, please consider becoming a member. Let me know again if you're interested in that class. If you are a member, uh, be involved in the process and, and pray for your leaders and the, the great roles and responsibilities that they take part in. So, hey, uh, changing gears, something really cool uh, came upon my email uh, maybe a, a week ago or so, but Kelsey, do you mind coming up, uh, on up here? And uh, Kelsey and her friend Madala uh, have an opportunity that they wanted to share with you. And I was so excited for this. We wanted to bring them up in front. And uh, can you let us know what's going on, Kelsey? So what we're doing in our ELA class, we were asked to do an activist project. And so we wanted to do something for Oakland Hope. So we're going to have a donation drive here. We're going to have a donation box in the foyer and in the youth building. And we figured out what they needed most was silverware and jewelry. And then they also said they accept cash, donation, cash donations, so you can um, donate those online if you want to. Or they also said they needed furniture, so if you wanted to bring that up, you could. So. 
direct to Oakland yeah. Hopeville, right? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> yeah. we don't have a whole bunch of spot for furniture, but we do for some of these other things. And so here's a couple of gals who came together and said, hey, we want to make a difference. How do, how do we do this? And identified one of our local partners who's doing great things. Uh, that is Oakland Hope. And so uh, you guys have lined this up kind of on your own. And uh, what a great way to show God's love. So uh, anything else uh, that you want to mention to them or just uh, if they have questions, they can come see you? Yeah, you can come see me or um, if you have any questions. Okay. Well, can you guys e express encouragement to Kelsey? And uh, You guys, how, how cool is that? And that's so inspiring to me. And Kelsey, thank you so, so very much. And Madala, uh, thank you guys so very much for your guys' uh, roles in bringing this for us. And then uh, Todd Traver, are you here? Come on up here, buddy. Hey, can you give a warm welcome to, to my good friend, Todd? <laughs> hey, I missed you in first hour. Yeah. And did you see how well Kelsey did? Yeah. You've got big shoes to fill, okay? She was so nice to me, and she was so thoughtful in what she shared. I, I noticed on the leadership role stuff, you didn't, my name wasn't on there. Yes. Did you have anything to do with that? Yeah. I do such a bad job of me because you don't want me to have to do anything with leadership, right? I've got so many things for oh, you to do. So you, you don't need you don't anything need else. Role? Yeah. No. You don't need it. Um, hey, yeah, what's going on? The reason why I'm up here is we have a couple of things going on. Um, Impact Weekend's coming up. Uh, Pine Knob uh, Elementary School has some stuff that needs to be done. They want some logs and stuff done, some landscaping, a couple of signs put up and banners and so I'm going to try to lead that up on, on Saturday, and if we, everything gets done on Saturday, then I'm going to switch over to Oakland Hope and help out there. But we do have some needs in a lot of different areas, so I'm hoping everybody can come and hang out and do that. Um, the second and third thing, second thing is, is in the Asia trip's coming up uh, next year. Right now we have tentative dates for February 3rd for about 10 days. Um, they've got a building that they have one floor done, and they want to finish another floor. There's three or four floors they want to do, but right now the second floor needs to be done. Uh, so we're gonna, it's going to be mostly construction work, not as much as ministry and outreach and helping people in different ways that we normally do. So it's kind of more on that lines, but it doesn't mean that if you're not construction area and you can't go, it's just we're going to put together a team and go over there uh, next year. And then the third thing is, the siding thing is, the siding's got to be finished this year. So I'm bringing in some tools, trying to get that set up again. So in the next couple of weeks, we're going to start finishing up the siding on the building. Uh, hopefully that gets done before it gets too hot. Nobody gets to get out there and, and sweat. And I, I forgot about the fourth thing is we've got a special project that potentially is going to go out in the landscaping in that circle where the cars used to park at the dealership. Uh, that'll be uh, in some approval processes we're waiting on, but hopefully I can get a couple of people to help me out on it. And it's to do with metal work. So uh, just a mystery of what that might be. And, and you guys get an idea. Special project. Special project. <laughs> might have to be able to do some welding or at least help me lift some metal. So anyways, that's it. Can I help out? No, you don't have a lot. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> hey, give it up for Todd. Thanks so much for all you do here, Todd. Hey, cool stuff. And one of our one of our regional partners is this amazing camp just about an hour north of here called Covenant Hills Camp. And we uh, we are graced by their presence here. They are they are here. They're going to present to us. And we're going to start off that time with a quick video about Covenant Hills.
Amen. Isn't that great? And hey, uh, we're uh, Angel Schaefer is here, and she is the program director of Covenant Hills Camp. And uh, I know that is just a small scope of your role, and probably you cover and wear so many hats and cover so much more ground. But would you give a warm Waypoint welcome to Angel? Thank you. I want to thank you from the camp that is like everything's pretty much lakefront right now. <laughs> we keep having that wind and the, the water and the sunshades we put in, they're kind of underwater a little bit. The docks are floating, so um, yeah, and it just keeps raining and raining. But we are going to clear that stuff up and we're going to have summer again. As you can see that we have really fun things and I know that you guys are really involved in, in the camp. So you know how fun camp is. Um, as a partnering ministry, just want to fill you in on the ministry part because that's where I get excited and I know that that's where your heart is as well. Um, this last year has been kind of a a God saying, I hear your prayers and uh, this is how I'm going to respond kind of a thing. So I just want to make sure that you know as a partnering ministry that, that um, what God's done. Uh, this last year, we started praying to balance a budget, which it's been quite a while since we've done that. And um, God answered our prayers. We balanced our budget. So that's the I hear your prayers part. Wait for it. Um, I, we balanced our budget and we had extra left, extra left to invest in things that were kind of falling apart and needing attention. And then God said, see, I, I answered your prayer. I did more. But this is what I can really do. And we the debt that we carried over the year before, we paid that. <laughs> That's God. That is God working. You don't do that. Absolutely. You don't do that in nonprofit ministry. And only through the grace of God did we get to do that. Um, and that's the money part. Here's where I'm excited. Um, usually you have kind of a story that kind of sticks with you. And, and God says, yeah, talk about this and um, makes an imprint on your heart forever. And um, after family camp last year, uh, we had a huge camp. It was over 100 kids, and we had another camp in at the same time. So it was a really busy time for our, for our facility and for our staff. After family camp, we're tired out. So we had all these kids, and they had, most of them had been together for family camp, so they were kind of brewing this flu thing that they carried over and pa parents went home with the dirty laundry and they left their kids. And uh, so we had this stomach flu thing going on and I had a Cobb grandkid on a tub in the hallway of the, the health office waiting for her mom to pick her up and we were just, um, I, I was thinking, God, you hopefully you're doing something because all I'm doing is taking care of sick kids. But, um, God is faithful, and he has a vested interest in, in ministry and in kids, and I get to be part of that as my job. So here's the exciting thing, okay? During that time, uh, we, had a, we had teens there. We had a teen girl um, that said to her counselor, Michaela, who is our worship person, Michaela looks like my mom. And that cabin had homesickness bad. So that counselor's like, oh, that's great. Let's move on. Um, Michaela came in and played the guitar that night or all of the nights that week um, for them to be able to go to sleep. And um, towards the end of the week, that girl told Michaela, you look like my mom. And my mom died a couple years ago. And I've been so mad at God. And Michaela was able to pray with her, and she gave her heart to the Lord. And through that week, that was God saying, I have a plan for your salvation. I want relationship. I desperately want relationship with my children. And he, he completed that plan. But the plan, the bigger plan, what God can do is he spent a week just ministering to that girl's soul and just helping to start the healing process of all of that through being just a loving spirit. God is committed to us. He is so committed to us. And 
He can do what you're asking him in prayer. But he can do so much more that we have no idea even how to ask for. And I thank you for believing in our ministry, for supporting us, for helping us um, accomplish what God wants to accomplish through Covenant Hills Camp. And um, as a partnering ministry, you have no idea how much that means. Uh, we're really busy when all the fun people are there, and that's exhausting. And then everybody goes away during the winter time, and it's just us, and we're boring. And, and then it's lonely. But just to know that we have a church that is so committed to praying for us and, and believes in what God's doing there is amazing, and I thank you for that. Oh, well, amen. And before you hit it, yeah. It, we love you guys, and we're so thankful for what you guys are doing. We're big believers in what you're doing. Absolutely. So one last question. How can we pray for you and for the camp? Well, right now it is spring cleanup and opening up buildings, and we've had a lot of really high wind, so we have lots of trees down and branches and everything, and the water problem. Um, things just aren't draining right. Um, so just the ability to get all that done and I'm hiring staff right now and just preparing all of that stuff, that busyness so that when we do get campers, I can be part of just enjoying that. Yeah. Right on, right on. Let, let's pray. Let's take this moment. And uh, Father God, we love you. And God, we thank you so much for the blessings in our lives. We thank you for, uh, for places like Covenant Hills Camp. We thank you for Angel and for her role and for so many others that, that make this wonderful camp the place that it is. And so, Lord, we ask your anointing upon them. Lord, go before them as they hire staff, as they do preparations for this all-important summer season. And, Lord, uh, equip them for this, uh, this great work that you've prepared. And, God, we, we ask this knowing that, just as Angel mentioned, mentioned, you can do immeasurably more than all we could ever ask or imagine. So, God, we celebrate that, and we anticipate that. And, God, we give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Angel.
Amen. You may be seated. And would you express your gratitude to Mike and team as they led us in worship this morning? I got it. I got it. Oh, thanks, brother. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're too kind, Pat. Thanks, man. <laughs> Hey, have you ever been on a mission and uh, on a mission where your first thought is, I've got to do this by myself? I mean, have you ever been given an assignment? You know, maybe it's at school and, and it's some massive project and you're like, there's so much work to do and I don't get to ha have a teammate? Uh, have you ever been assigned something at work where, you know, hey, this is going to be really complex and, and I've got to figure this out without extra help? I mean, I, I can use like two or three people. Uh, you know, uh, this, I'll tell you that uh, before I went into ministry, I worked at, at Ford Motor Company, and one of my first assignments was uh, being sent to a plant in Louisville, Kentucky, an assembly plant, and what I was to do was I was to represent my plant with our part at this assembly plant as they were preparing to 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 start making this vehicle. And so I was sent there, and, uh, and I'll tell you, I'm like, are, are you serious? Like, I, I don't know this, I mean, I'm kind of new here. I mean, I'm going to have a hard time renting a car because I'm not old enough. I mean, how are you going to handle this? And, and so, but they, they said, go, oh, it usually goes, it's so super easy and all this stuff. Well, I'll tell you what happened, okay? So, so you can imagine that there's a, a guy in charge at this assembly plant, and there's no less than 60 people walking alongside as this thing, you know, gets put together and the different parts come on. And basically the, the process is, hey, does, do things fit okay? Everything working smooth? And, and they'd already done uh, one or a couple of these. And so I was just there as, as one, of the, one of the 60 plus people. And so I'm walking along with this. And so the guy in charge stops everything at one spot. And he says, okay, who represents this part? And it was mine. And so I had the lovely, lovely opportunity of just stepping up and front of everybody else and saying that was mine and, and so we heard about it and I got to bring some stuff back to my place not my favorite moment of life okay I'll, I'll tell you that I, I had to do this by myself and I was not excited for that okay it might be some, you know doing things on our own it might be something as simple as hey there's nobody else in the house and there is a gigantic spider that needs to be taken care of okay so hey what other options do you have you're on a mission by yourself and you, you got to take care of this so this is the context with which we're, we're talking today. And the beautiful thing in our lives and in our mission and in our calling is that we're not alone. You see, and, and last week we celebrated Easter, and we celebrated this fact that Jesus gave his life for us. He was the perfect sacrifice, and he rose again. And then we read in Acts 1a this key, all-important verse for us. Some of Jesus' last words to his followers, he says this in Acts 1a, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And this is Jesus' commission, his, his, his charge to his followers. You've got to do this. You've got to be my witnesses. And we've talked about this at length here at Waypoint. And this is the way we structure our ministry, that we say, Jesus, these are some of your last words to your followers. We want to be your witnesses. We want to do this locally and have local partners. We want to do this regionally and have regional partners. We want to do this even to the ends of the earth globally and have opportunities for that where we go deep in partnerships and have effective ministry and build into these different areas of the world, Jesus, that you've spoken into. And so we've structured that. And the beautiful thing is there's a key part of this verse that we're going to highlight today and talk about today. And of course, Jesus starts off and he says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And he was, of course, speaking of what would happen a few weeks later at Pentecost, when God's Holy Spirit was poured out on his followers. And we see this amazing transformation and this awesome comfort and, and this wonderful thing that God's Holy Spirit goes with us as we seek to be his witnesses, as we seek to be his ambassadors. So this Holy Spirit, this, this mysterious person, uh, is, is, is part of the Godhead. Genesis 1 hints at, right at the very beginning of, of our scriptures, Genesis 1 says this, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, 
and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And I'll tell you, throughout the Old Testament, before Jesus did his earthly ministry, throughout the Old Testament, you see glimpses and hints of God's Holy Spirit, you know, uh, working in people's lives, manifesting himself to, to cause people to go above and beyond what they were capable of. I'll mention to you guys a couple of people in, in Old Testament scriptures is Bezalel and Oholiab. Who are these guys, right? You know, okay. In Exodus, you read about these guys. And they were anointed, they were gifted by the Holy Spirit to do their craft in a way that was meaningful for God. Because who were they? They were the guys that God called and anointed with his Holy Spirit to construct the tabernacle and the elements of, of their, their sanctuary there, if you will, the table, the lampstands, the basin, the, uh, uh, the altar, uh, the ark. Bezalel and Oholiab were gifted, anointed, filled with the Holy Spirit, for this specific work. And this is one of the ways that we see the Holy Spirit pop up throughout the Old Testament in these glimpses, in this specific person or specific duration or specific time period or specific role that, that was needed to be filled. And we saw the Holy Spirit appear in different ways, but just you know, picking spots here and there, if you will. Okay? And that all changed because of what Jesus did for us. You see, what Jesus did for us, it, is, it, it can't be overstated. It's, it's amazing the access that we now have to God because Jesus was the perfect sacrifice. You see, in, in the old days, in the Old Testament, you saw the sacrificial system, and it wasn't perfect, but it, it foreshadowed pointing to Jesus and this great need that we have because of our sins and our separation from God and this relationship that has to be restored and could only be perfectly restored by a perfect sacrifice and what Jesus did for us. So Jesus speaks of this even before he, he is betrayed and crucified and then rises from the grave. John 16, verse 7, speaks, uh, this is Jesus' quote to his followers. And in the context, they're, they're saddened hearing the things that Jesus is talking to them about. But listen to what Jesus says in verse 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Helper, the Holy Spirit, will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And this is what happens weeks later after Jesus' resurrection and on Pentecost. You can read about it in Acts chapter 2. And this amazing outpouring of God's Holy Spirit, this manifestation of his presence, this, this outpouring of God dwelling in us. I mean, think about this. Creator, infinite, holy God says that we, our bodies, are a temple of his Holy Spirit. That God chooses to dwell in us through his Holy Spirit now and beyond when we trust in Jesus as our Lord when we have our sins forgiven because we have access to the Father that we never had that wasn't possible before Jesus did the perfect sacrifice. I mean, think of it. Through the tabernacle, through the temple, you have the Holy of Holies. You have this amazing place where the Ark of the Covenant dwelt. It was God's footstool amongst his people, his symbolic presence amongst his people. And there was a curtain and no small curtain that would just flap in the wind and you could kind of, you know, uh, wait for your moment and see behind. This was a sturdy, huge curtain that separated God's presence from God's people. One person, once a year, was able to go in that, the, the high priest, okay? And did that after offering many sacrifices for himself and then for the people. And once a year was able to go into God's presence for this purpose, okay? When Jesus on the cross, gave his life, even though he was innocent. When he breathed his last, when he says, it is finished, that temple curtain was torn from top to bottom, this gigantic curtain separating. And now there was access to the Holy of Holies because of what Jesus did. This access to God that we now have. And by the way, that curtain, it's clear from Scripture, that curtain was not torn from bottom to top in the way that a human would do it, but that curtain was torn from top to bottom. 
It was God who said, this separation is no longer required. The price has been paid fully by my son, and now God's people can be with God. And this is manifest through God's outpouring of his Holy Spirit. And throughout the New Testament, we see where God's Holy Spirit now dwells in his followers in this humble, wonderful thing that we are gifted with God's Holy Spirit. And we're not in this alone. We're going to take a look at a passage in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And Paul writes about God's indwelling of of his Holy Spirit in our lives. And specifically, one of the, the things that happens, this wonderful, wonderful treasure that happens when we trust in Jesus, when we have God's Holy Spirit dwell in us, is that we are given a spiritual gift. And this is, a, this is a, it may look like an ability or, or some type of talent, but it goes far beyond that. Because a spiritual gift in its simplest form is God's partnership with us to do his work. And it's manifest in many different ways. It might be a gift of encouraging. It might be a gift of giving. It might be a gift of leadership. It might be a gift of, of speaking, whatever. But there's all these opportunities where God works in and through his people because his Holy Spirit dwells in us. So we read about, what, about this in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And Paul writes this before this, the great love chapter uh, and the emphasis that these need to be done in love. And Paul speaks into it very, very specifically about spiritual gifts. Chapter 12, verse 1. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were led astray to mute idols, however you were led. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking in the Spirit of God ever says Jesus is cursed. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except in the Holy Spirit. And you think about Paul's context, even as he writes this through the inspiration of God's Holy Spirit. The context is there's all kinds of pagan gods and and religions. And so this this new idea that God is going to pour out his Spirit probably prompted a lot of questions. Well, hey, if this person has a gift of encouragement and this person has a gift of giving, does that mean that they're rivals and rival gods? And, you know, hey, I can't wait to to see what happens when these guys, you know, battle against each other. No, it's about unity. And, And check this out. When we have God's Holy Spirit, that's how we're able to say Jesus is Lord. Okay, and, and people who, you know, who would say Jesus is accursed, they're, they're separate from God. They are not in, in uh, one of God's followers. And this is how you determine. It's not the way that their giftings look like through the Holy Spirit, but far greater that they proclaim Jesus as their Lord. That's what unites us. Continuing on, verse 4. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of service, but the same Lord. There are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who empowers them all and everyone. Unity, unity, unity. Jesus prayed this on our behalf. We're called in Scripture and throughout Scripture to be united. And, and Paul speaks of it this way. We're going to look different from each other. We're going to act different from each other. We're going to have different giftings. And that's to be celebrated. This is part of the diversity that God breathes into his people. And we're better when we all, through our different giftings, through our different personalities, and, and this wonderful, wonderful spectrum of, of, and, and tapestry of God's followers coming together, united because of Jesus. And so this has got to be at the cornerstone, regardless of, the, of our giftings. And, and this next verse is absolutely key. It needs to be underlined, write this down, highlight this, whatever. But 1 Corinthians 12, 7, Paul, through the Holy Spirit, speaks of the purpose. And listen to this. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. We receive God's Holy Spirit, not, not so I can say, hey, look at me, or look at the spiritual gift that I have, or look at how special they are, and I'm not, and comparisons, and all that. It's not for that. Spiritual gifts and the work of God's Holy Spirit in our lives is for the common good. It's for each other. 
It's the ways that we can build each other up and encourage each other and speak into each other's lives and help each other on this journey of life as we pursue loving God and loving people. It's not for ourselves or any kind of hey, look at me moment. Or it's not to be admired by others and say, well, they've got this and I don't. But it's, it's for the common good. It's for each other. A quick example of this. Um, I, I love traveling. I, I love going to different places and seeing different cultures. And, and uh, r- somewhat recently, my mom got a chance to take us to England as a family and see some of my heritage there through, through her family. And it's just a great, great trip. One of my favorite spots there was at Edinburgh, Scotland. And there's a, a wonderful castle there in Edinburgh. And uh, it sits up on a hill, and it's just magnificent. It, it just, I, I love it. I took a bunch of pictures of it, and I just I, I, I love seeing that. Okay, and getting to see it lit up at night was, was no less special than the, you know, this. But it would be similar to if I were to take my family up there at night, and these spotlights are shining on the castle. And you can walk around the, around the castle, and you can be in the midst of it. And, and what if you spent your, your evening looking at these lights that illuminate the castle? And, and you know, kind of stopping the family there and say, wow, look at that spotlight. I mean, it's amazing. I mean, look at how brightly that spotlight shines. I mean, it, you don't look directly into it. I'd love to see the wiring diagram for this and the way they power this. And I mean, if we had to guess the wattage of this, these bulbs and stuff, this is amazing. And check, hey, kids, why don't you stand there while we get a picture of you next to the spotlight? And if, if we were to do this, you'd be like, what are you doing? The spotlight is there to point to the castle. It's meant to shine brightly on that, and you're just spending all your time doing that? We would err if we, if, if we did this to each other and said, well, look at, look at what they do, and look at, what, you know, and look at how brightly I shine. No, it's about the one that we're, we're pointing to. That spotlight is meant to point to the castle or whatever it's illuminating. We are meant to point to Jesus. And we've got to live this out. And we have opportunity to do this in the power of the Holy Spirit. But remembering that to each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. Verse 8, for to one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the ability to distinguish between spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. And Paul lists just some, but this is nowhere near an exhaustive list, and there's others mentioned in Scripture, and I've got to believe that a creative God who creates uh, uh, such a variety of people and giftings and the ways that God works in us in so many different ways that there is a lot that is untapped, that there is a lot of potential for us, and there's a lot of opportunities in different ways where we get a chance to partner with God's Holy Spirit for God's work and for God's kingdom, for the common good. Verse 11, all of these are empowered by one and the same Spirit who apportions to each one individually as he wills. And this is going to look different for every one of us And and this is to be celebrated, the fact that you have a purpose, and part of that purpose is walking in step with God's Holy Spirit through the giftings that he's given to you to build into other people. That's one of life's great journeys and great treasures and is something to be celebrated. If you wanted to pursue this more, there's, there's lots of things called spiritual gifts tests that help you identify what your spiritual gift might be. And uh, there's some that are really good and some that are, might, might be lacking. But if you want to pursue this at all, I'd love the conversation. Just email me. I'd love to point you in a, a direction or two. Pastor Kyle is also available and, and offered his assistance in that. Uh, if you haven't done membership, take membership class, and we'll talk about some of these things in membership class. But we're not alone. We've been given a very challenging mission. We've been called to be Jesus' witnesses around the earth and everywhere in between. But we're not alone as we do it. We've got God's Holy Spirit dwelling inside us, leading us to do great work. And we count this one of the greatest privileges of our lives. The infinite, holy God would say, I want to partner with my people to do great things for my kingdom. Let's be a part of that 
as we go from this place. Let's pray. Father God, we love you. And God, we thank you so much for your Holy Spirit. God, we thank you for this awesome and amazing calling and even privilege to partner with you for these great purposes. And so, Lord, inspire us, lead us, and give us insight into ways that we can live this out in our family, in our school, in our community, in our workplace, in our, in our environment, in our culture, God, in every place that we're at, even, even on social media and online, Lord, help us to be your witnesses through the power of your Holy Spirit. Lord, it's in Jesus' name that we pray all of this. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a great Sunday. And uh, hey, just a quick announcement is we have a need for a memorial service for tables to be set up. And Pastor Kyle's reminding me of that. And we've got uh, about 20 tables that we need set up. We can use a lot of help. So if you're able to do that, see Pastor Kyle in the back. He'll help. In trouble time.